Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we surrender our lives to you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In our weakness, Lord, your strength is made perfect. We surrender, Lord, our, all the areas Lord, in our lives into your hands, Father. And we say, Lord, come and have your way, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for you see us through from Hallelujah. You are our Father in heaven. Thank you, Jesus, for you have compassion on your children. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for this love, Lord, that you have poured out. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' most precious and I pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you. I once again surrender the Lord of myself, also those who are here into your hands, your precious hands, Lord. And Lord, um, I pray now we're getting a bit understanding. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you that you will direct our first steps by your word. Thank you. I once again yield myself to the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So today, We're going to talk about the fall and the flood. So Re Rebbe went through the orientation sessions in the past year. Uh, it's to orient ourselves to the what is the plan of God in our lives for each and every person. And in that, she talked about all the events that happened in the Bible, the fall of man, the creation then the fall of man, then the promise, the redemption, and the restoration of all things. So without the fall of man, uh, this, the subsequent judgments that happened to man would not have happened. After only when Adam sinned and Eve was deceived, then, then came the judgment that followed. Um, so, God's final judgment is not by, uh, not by flood, but by fire. So, let's start with um, Romans 10.9. So it says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And let's go to 1 Thessalonians 4.3. says, for this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality. So, after we are saved, God is sanctifying us. It is the will of God to, uh, that we are sanctified. And it is a job that we have to do, and He also helps us as He perfects that which concerns us. And now, let's go to Romans 8.14.
says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. So, in order to be, in order to be sanctified, in order to, when we're seeking Him, we have to be led by the Spirit of God. We have to walk in obedience to His Spirit. So, um, what this comes down to is we are we want to to understand to understand the, the the prophetical nature of what is happening and that now instead of the flood God will judge by fire the world. So to understand the prophetical nature, we need to seek Him to understand. Um, uh, we need to seek uh, God's understanding rather than relying on our own understanding. For example, so we'll start with the two kings. Um, I will just talk about it. There was a time, uh, Elisha, and Elisha was there. Uh, he's, a pro he's a prophet. So, after, so when Syria was wanted to attack Israel, Elisha was there with his servant, and he... Uh, he talked, he, he showed his servant that though the Syrians have a big army, um, it is not just that Elisha and, the, and his servant was there. It is, uh, he, he, should, he, he showed his, Elisha showed his servant that there were chariots of fire. So the chariots of fire can, uh, um, obviously, um, they were not chariots of fire. It is something symbolic. Uh, it is what. Um, it is not what. Uh, it is what Elisha, who, who, the person who wrote this, how they described. Um, how they describe what they saw at that time, based on their level of understanding of the technology they had. So what they saw, what they said they saw, is chariots of fire. So, what it it could be, what it is likely is that it is, it is uh, what they saw is chariots, something that looked like chariots of fire. Yes. So it was, it it looked like um, it it could be something circular. We don't know, but like uh, these days there talks about UFOs circular. It could be something they saw something circular which had fire around them and they and so they looked at them and they said it's cheap it looked like chariots of fire so uh that is to give you an example so so we need um to understand what uh, what is happening we need to look we need to be guided by a scripture especially when it comes to prophetical things things of prophetical nature So, um, in the Bible, in the in uh, in the New Testament, the Pharisees they 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 misinterpreted who Jesus was. They uh, so many times you see that they, they never they rejected him. They rejected the true Messiah, and the Pharisees were the people who who read the who read the law of Moses. They followed the law of Moses. And uh, yet they, when, when Jesus was there, the Messiah, whom they spoke of, right in front of them, they didn't recognize him. The re why was, what was the reason for that? It was they, 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 were, they had their own understanding of who God, who God was, who the Messiah was. Yes. So they, for the most part, the Pharisees rejected Jesus. There are some that didn't. That's why it's for the most part. If you look at Nicodemus, he was he was he was a teacher. He 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 he, he realized there was something different in Jesus. He was some there was something different about him, and he, and because of that, he inquired. He secretly, he went to inquire by night. I want to know who Jesus is. Can you, uh, 
can you tell me? So he had a secret, he had a meeting with Jesus to understand him better. Just because he understood he was different. Similarly, Simeon was, uh, it, it was the, during the time when Jesus was being born. He was filled, he had the Holy Spirit upon him. And, and, and the Lord told, had told him he would see the Lord Jesus, that he would see the child, the Messiah, before he died. And when he came, he recognized him. So it is because he was seeking him. He was seeking after the truth, seeking after the Lord, who is the Lord. So this, so let's go to Matthew 16, 13. So Matthew 16, 3. Hmm? Matthew 16, 3. Hmm. There it says, and in, this is Jesus saying, and in the morning it will be foul weather today, where the sky is red and threatened. Hypocrites, you know how to discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. So this is Jesus speaking to the Pharisees. That how he's, he's, he is challenging their understanding because the God, the God, the Messiah is standing right in front of them and they, they're not able to discern him. So he's saying, can, so we need to understand, we need the importance of um, understanding what is of prophetical nature so that we don't miss when Jesus comes, to say, when he comes again the second time. We don't miss him. We don't think he's just another person. So we need to base our understanding of prophecy, not on the traditions of men, not on our own understanding, but matching scripture with scripture. If a scripture says one thing, we match it. And if it matches with another scripture, that is one way of saying, uh, knowing that um, okay, this is exactly what is happening. This is exactly what will happen if it is a prophecy. So let's go to Matthew 24, 37 to 39. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Whereas in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So uh, again, we are, if we don't understand what is of prophetical nature, we it is. It, it says that the last days, in those days, it will be like the days of Noah, when, when uh, people were happy, they were giving, they were rejoicing, not knowing the end, that is, not knowing the wrath of God that is coming. Um, so we, we need to be aware of the times and seasons, and how do we do that? God wants us to know the times and the seasons, and how do we know that? It is through Scripture and to matching scripture with scripture. So let's go to Acts 6, 17, 11. It says, these are who are more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica, in that they receive the word with all readiness, and search the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. So, 
Paul talk, but it, it, so here the people who read the who listened to the word, they searched the scriptures daily to find out whether what Paul was speaking to them was true. So they it, it required their own looking to see and understand. Let's go to Matthew 23. Yeah. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. So this is, in this scripture, um, you're, you can see that the words, the sentence, he shall be called a Nazarene is in quotations. It means that, um, so you would, looking at this um, scripture, you will automatically you think um, that this has been written in the Old Testament, that this has been prophesied. This prophecy is written somewhere in the Old Testament, but when you look, you don't find it there at all. So this is an example of trying to understand prophecy by looking at scripture. When we, um, so you, so uh, there can be uh, various understandings of this. So some, um, some people could say it is a general statement that he is a Nazarene. It is, um, some people could say that uh, th there is another tradition that Nazareth, that Nazareth, uh, that Nazareth, from Nazareth come the people, all the people who are rejected. So, uh, so in some interpretations, it, it is, it is noted down as, uh, when it says he shall be called a Nazarene, it is in some in some understanding it is noted as that it is someone who is rejected. But unless we look at the word of God and see God for understanding, uh, we won't know what the Lord is saying. So there is some kind, there some kind different kinds of prophecies. There's, uh, for example, there is a non-verbal prophecy. So when you look at the Passover lamb, that uh, in the Old Testament, uh, which happened during when Israel was, is the people of Israel were trying to get out of Egypt, that Passover lamb, um, it was a symbol um, of what was to come. Jesus was the lamb who was slain from the foundation of the world. So. That is a, that is a non-verbal prophecy. Um, so only when you read, when you look at the Old and the New Testament, you can, the Lord tells you that. Yes. So right now we will look at two scriptures to understand the nature of prophecy. What is prophecy? So let's go to 1 Corinthians 14, 22. <laughs> Therefore, tongues are for a sign. not to those who believe 1 Corinthians 14 22 
Therefore, tongues are for a sign, not to those who believe, but to unbelievers. But prophecy, prophesying is not for unbelievers, but for those who believe. So the first thing we understand is prophecy is for those who believe. Unless we believe in the Lord Jesus, what he did for us, and unless we obey him, we cannot prophesy. Nor can we understand it. So, well, it is, so that is the first um, aspect of prophecy. The second aspect is 2 Peter 1.21. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So the second second thing is that we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. When, uh, it says that holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So they were moved only because they were filled with the Holy Spirit. They were moved by the Holy Spirit because they were filled with the Holy Spirit. So we need to keep those two things in mind when we are trying to understand. Let's go to um, Galatians 3.19. What purpose then does the law serve? It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was appointed through angels by the hand of a mediator. So here, um, it, it's talking about the law, the law of Moses. What uh, Paul is saying, what purpose then does the law serve? It was added because of transgressions. And what are these transgressions? So, we, we, um, it, we cannot simply say these transgressions are the transgressions of Israel. Because of the, uh, what they did at uh, Mount Sinai when, when they were uh, worshipping a cow, calf, it is, and um, uh, for example, and it is not just these transgressions. It is, if you if you go back to the beginning in Genesis, when uh, Cain murdered his brother Abel, God overlooked that. So that is that 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 sh so that should tell you that um, these trans the transgressions were not the transgressions of Israel. It is something bigger than that. Uh, let us go to um, Genesis 6, 1 to 3. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves, all of whom they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. So this, this is actually what that transgression is. It is the sons of men, meaning the angels of God, who went down to the earth and and uh, took wives, took people in marriage. So that is a transgression that it's talking about in Galatians. Um, if you go to Psalm 115, 16. Okay. 
Psalm 115, 16 says, The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's, but the earth he has given to the children of men. So the earth God had given to the children of men, and the angels came down, and they were looking to do something foolish. So they, but they knew that the only way they could do it is if they made a covenant with the, the children of men, that is, that is you and me in, the, in that time. Uh, not you and us, but uh, in that time. So the only way, so they went, so they, so they went in marriage. They made a covenant. They could have, they could have uh, forcefully taken them, but they had to make a covenant. And that, that which led to God saying, my spirit shall not strive with man forever. So that was a judgment that started. Let's go to 2 Peter 2 4. For God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment. Again, this is talking about the angels who, who, who God delivered into chains of darkness. These are the same angels in Genesis 6. Now let's go to 2 Peter 3, 7. But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So this is talking about the final judgment. So instead of the flood, the next last, uh, the last judgment will be by fire. And we, and we, we are part of the church. We are part of the Lord's church. So. We should know through the word that we are saved from wrath. And I will show you through the scriptures. And we, we will have persecution. So we need to understand that there will be persecution there. And there is persecution, but we will be saved from God's wrath. Let's go to 2 Peter 3, 12, 13. Okay. 2 Peter 3, 12 to 13. says, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Again, this is talking about judgment by fire. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians 1, 6-8. Since it is a righteous thing with God to repay with tribulation those who trouble you, and to give you who are troubled rest with us, when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, 
and framing fire taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in all this, again, we should understand that God wants us. God does not want that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. It says that in the Bible, yes. And, and God wants us to know that we are saved for those who believe in Him. We are saved from God's wrath. So let's go to Romans 5.9. says says much more than having now been justified by his blood we shall be saved from wrath through him so this is talking about God's wrath and he, it says that those who are justified by his blood who believe in his work on the cross will be saved from wrath through him. And, and this is different from persecution. So you may have seen once that pastor showed a timeline of what will happen during when the Antichrist comes and uh, to the time when there is a rapture. So during that time, there is tribulation and then there is God's wrath. So we have, there will be tribulation, but we will be saved from his wrath. For, because he believe in him. Yes. Amen. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians 5 9. It says, For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> Okay. Let's go to Galatians 3.24. It says, <coughs> Therefore, the law was a tutor to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. This is, this is speaking about, Paul is speaking about those who at that time were under the law. That it was a tutor to bring us to Christ, so that we might be justified by faith. So it is our faith in Christ. Through believing in Him, first we have to believe. And once we believe, we, through obedience, we have to walk in faith. And with that salvation, we are safe from God's wrath. Yes, Amen. So in the last book of the Revelation, it says, the last, last two verses, he who testifies to these things says, surely I am coming quickly. That is Lord Jesus saying, surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. So, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all.
Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for enabling me to be to speak your word today. And thank you, Lord, for the word that we receive. I surrender all of us, Lord, right now into your precious hands. Thank you, Lord, that you are the potter and we are the clay and we are the work of your hands. And I thank you, Lord, that as we trust you right now and henceforth, that you, that Lord, that it is you who are molding us to your perfect plan. And we know that your plans are better than any other plans. We thank you, Lord. And we thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that for the word of once again that we received today. I think I pray that it bears fruit in us and we know we will receive that. Amen. Amen.